All right, so today we are going to be talking about arithmetic sequences. Um, we'll do series tomorrow. Today we'll just focus on sequences. So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence that has a common difference. which we just use the letter D to represent the common distance. So for example, if I want to tell whether or not a sequence is arithmetic, I just have to look at what happens as I go from term to term. So as I go from negative 4 to 1, what did I do? I added 5. What about from 1 to 6? I added 5. What about from 6 to 11? I added 5. So do I have a common difference? It's adding 5 every time. So that means that it is arithmetic. And it has a common difference of 5. Let's take a look at B. What's happening on B? How much should I go up from 3 to 5? Up to, what about 5 to 9? 4, 9 to 15, 6, 8. Okay, is that a common difference? No. It does have a pattern, but it's not arithmetic. There's no common difference, okay? So remember when we um, have our sequences, the x values are just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. right? So if you want to graph it, if I plot the points 1, negative 4, 2, 1, 3, 6, and I'll go ahead and stick 4, 11 up there. Um, is there anything you notice about those points when I graph them? They make, they're in a straight line, yeah. If I drew a line between them, it would connect all the points. So that's one of the things about arithmetic sequences is they are actually linear. And so because they're linear, we can use that y equals mx plus b relationship to figure out the rule for our arithmetic sequences. So it just looks a little different because a sub n is the nth term when I, and n is the number of the term, but really all that is, is y equals mx plus b. It's just now we're using different terms to represent it. Um, the other way that it might show up is in function notation. So you might see f of n is equal to dn plus f of zero. That would be how you would write it in function notation but it's still just y equals mx plus b. The difference is, is that our domain is just the counting numbers, right? Which is your natural numbers. So let's look at an example. We've got, um, we're going to write the rule for the nth term of the sequence, and then we're going to find a sub 15. So again, these are my, um, you know, first, second, third, fourth term, and so on. And so what's happening on this one? We're adding 5, so my difference is 5. And I know a sub 1 is equal to 4. So if I think about what if I went backwards and found the one that came before 4, what would I do? I would subtract 5. I would take that 4 and I would subtract the 5 from it. So that's what you do to figure out what your a sub 0 is. And in this case, it would be negative 1. So now my rule is just a sub n equals 5n minus 1 because my difference is my slope and then I just found by working backwards what would go 
for a sub 0. So essentially, it's what your y-intercept would be if you were graphing it on a line. And it was an actual continuous line, not a discrete function. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and then to find a sub 15, we just have to plug in a 15. So 5 times 15 minus 1. That's 75 minus 1. So a sub 15 would be 74. Any questions? All right, let's take a look at another one. Now I've got 60, 52, 44, 36. What's happening on that one? I am subtracting 8. So my difference for this one, or my slope, is negative 8. And I know a sub 1 is 60, so if I want to find a sub 0, I'm going backwards, right? So um, instead of subtracting 8, what should I do to a sub 1? Add the 8, right? So it's 68. And so a sub n is negative 8, n plus 68. Now you can always double check that you did it right because if you go back and you plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, you should get those terms. If I plug in a 1, I get 68 minus 8, which is... 60. If I plug in a 2, I get 68 minus 16, which is 52. If I plug in a 3, I get 68 minus 24, which is 44. So it's working, right? You can always double check that it works by going back and plugging in 1, 2, 3, 4 and make sure it matches your sequence, okay? All right, then to find a sub 15, we just plug it in. So how about you guys figure out what a sub 15 is now? I'll let you guys figure that out. All right, what did you guys find? Negative 52. Sounds like there's a consensus out there. That's correct. Okay, so now I have one for you guys to do all by your lonesome, completely on your own. 17, 14, 11, and 8. All right, so as I walked around, it looked like everybody was getting it. A sub n is negative 3n plus 20, and a sub 15 was negative 25. All right, so let's take a look at this here. Now we've got one term of an arithmetic sequence that is um, a sub 19 equals 48, and the common difference is 3. And we are going to write the rule for this sequence. So this is kind of like what we did on warm-ups. I've given you a point on the line, and I've given you the slope. The point on the line is 19, 48, if we were graphing it. And my slope is what? 3. Okay, that common difference. So to write the rule, essentially you're just doing y equals mx plus b. But instead of writing y equals mx plus b, I write a sub n equals dn plus a sub 0. So a sub n, um, we'll go ahead and use our a sub 19, is equal to my difference of 3 times the 19 plus a sub 0. And I know a sub 19 is 48, so I'll go ahead and put the 48 in. 3 times 19 is 57. And so if I subtract 57 from both sides, a sub 0 comes out to negative 9, right? Yeah. So that means that a sub n is equal to 3n minus 9. Do you guys see how it's very similar to what we did when we were just finding the equation of a line, given the slope and a point? It's essentially the same thing. We're just using different letters, that's all. So here's one for you guys to do on your own. A sub 11 is negative 57, and the common difference is negative 7. All 
All right, so when you plugged in um, 11 for your n, and then a sub 11 was negative 57, you should have gotten that a sub 0 was 20. And so your rule would have been a sub n equals negative 7n plus 20. Okay. Questions? All right, so that was like the first two warm-up problems we did. The second two warm-up problems we did, I gave you two points on the line. And what was the first thing you had to do? Find the slope. All right, well, that's the same thing you're going to do if I give you two terms. If I give you two terms to a sequence, you need to find the slope, or in other words, the common difference. All right, so when we're doing y equals mx plus b, the slope is the change in y over the change in x, right? So my con so um, yeah, so because this is linear, I'm going to find my slope. Or in other words, my common difference, okay? So, um, I didn't write that right. Okay, so my difference is just going to be my change in y over my change in x. Well, my y is the output or the, the terms of the sequence, right? So, um, it's the change in a sub n, and then the x values are just the n values, so the change in n. So um, a sub n, I went from 21 to 97, so I'll just do 97 minus 21, and those were terms um, 27 and terms 8. So in other words, I've got, I went this distance, and it was this many terms, I just have to divide by how many terms it was, to figure out how much I moved for each one, right? So 97 minus 21, we get 76, and 27 minus 8, we get 19, and so that comes out to a common difference of 4. And now I'm going to use the same thing that we did before. I just have to find a sub 0 so that I can write my equation. And does it matter if I use a sub 8 or a sub 27? No, I can use either one. So why don't you guys continue on from here, since you already know how to do that, and find the rule. So what you guys end up with? a sub n equals what? 4n minus 11, that's right. All right, so here's another one. You guys can do this one completely on your own without any help from me. a sub 7 is 26, and a sub 16 is 71. Find the slope of your line, because again, it's like you've got two points, right? I've got the point 726. And I have the point 1671. Find the slope. And then find the equation. Okay, so as I walked around, it looked like you guys were all getting the correct answer. Um, when you figure out the common difference, you end up with 45 over 9. So that means basically they went up nine terms and they added on 45 so that means they had to have been going by increments of five um, so your common difference is five and then when you solve backwards to find a sub zero it comes out to negative nine so a sub n equals five n minus nine any questions we're all good all right that's all i've got for you guys today